In the Romantic Age, human effects on the environment were becoming increasingly apparent in England, from greater air pollution, particularly from the burning of coal, to deforestation, to the mills and factories which were being built throughout the country. We can say that animal rights and welfare is an area in which we see concrete political activity, such as the passing of anti-cruelty legislation and the formation of the Society for the Prevention of the Cruelty to Animals. Romantic writers reflected this concern. Percy B. Shelley stood among the radicals of this movement, advocating for vegetarian diet in his A Vindication of Natural Diet, 1813. He also used poetic images of nature for political purposes, directly invoking the voice of the earth in poems like Mask of Anarchy, 1819, and Prometheus Unbound, 1820. Writers like Blake and Byron present us with images of environmental apocalypse and, even though they cannot yet contemplate modern environmental concerns like global warming or nuclear winter, they do encourage us to think of life on Earth as a fragile affair. In general, romantic writers often invoked a concept of nature's economy to express the interdependent web of relations that characterized life on Earth. This concept stressed the mutual obligations that should govern humankind and convey a sense of universal fraternity, but it could also be used to justify a given social order which could not be changed or modified. An example of the romantic environmental concerns is Blake and Shelley's world historical declamations or Coleridge's contemplation of the whole of nature as a forming power connecting all living beings. In the USA, a new philosophical movement developed in the late 1820s and 30s. It was called Transcendentalism. Transcendentalism means that people, men and women equally, have knowledge about themselves and the world around them that transcends or goes beyond what they can see, hear, taste, touch or feel. This knowledge comes through intuition and imagination, not through logic or the senses. People can tr trust themselves to be their own authority on what is right. So, we can say that a transcendentalist is a person who accepts these ideas not as religious beliefs, but as a way of understanding life relationships. Among them, Ralph Waldo Emerson, who was a Harvard-educated essayist and lecturer, is recognized as the first truly American thinker. He believed that people were naturally good and that everyone's potential was limitless. He inspired his colleagues to look into themselves, into nature, into art, and work to find answers to life's most perplexing questions. His intellectual contributions to the philosophy of transcendentalism inspired a uniquely American idealism and spirit of reform. The Transcendental Club was associated with members such as Nathaniel Hawthorne, Henry Wadsworth, Longfellow and Walt Whitman. But the most interesting character by far was Henry David Thoreau, who tried to put Transcendentalism into practice. He was a great admirer of Emerson. For two years Thoreau carried out the most famous experiment in self-reliance when he went to Walden Pond built a hut and tried to live self-sufficiently without the interference of society. Later, when he wrote about the simplicity and unity of all things in nature, his faith in humanity and his individualism, Thoreau reminded everyone that life is wasted pursuing wealth and following social customs. Nature can show that all good things are wild and free. As a group, the th Transcendentalists led the celebration of the American condition as one of individualism and self-reliance and took progressive stands on women's rights, abolition, reform and education. They criticized government, organized religion, laws, social institutions and creeping industrialization. They believed that imagination was better than reason, 
creativity was better than theory, and action was better than contemplation. And I had faith that all would be well because humans could all transcend their limits and reach astonishing heights.